What is going on guys? Hope all you guys are doing great. I hope everything's good. Hope you guys are staying safe out there with your families. Uh, right off the bat, I just wanted to give a huge shout out to Josh Yu. Um, thank you for this awesome camera. It's a Canon EOS 70D. Uh, I made an intro for last video that I did, uh, the 4G63 assembly video. Um, and it was like 15 minutes long, so that's why I didn't put it because it was already an hour long video. And it was basically me talking about me, uh, Josh and how he's a close friend of mine and how he's been there for me, you know, throughout the whole journey that I've had. Uh, he was basically the reason that, uh, you know, I kind of got my name out in YouTube and uh, social media and stuff like that. So I owe him greatly because of that. So thank you, Josh. Just wanted to, you know, put that out there officially. Uh, obviously, me and him talk, but just wanted to clear up some things because. You know, some people will go on his videos and they'll feel like he's kind of trying to have a go at me. Well, he's not. He's my friend. You know, we talk all the time. And, uh, you know, a couple of weeks back, I was in a very dark, you know, uh, place. And uh, I called Josh and, you know, he showed up in like uh, 30 minutes and he lives almost an hour away. So he's a true friend to me. Uh, he's helped me out a lot. He supported me, promoted me since day one. And uh, for that, I owe him big time. Um, and thank you, Josh. So it doesn't go unnoticed. Uh, really appreciate you brother much love and uh, again thanks for this awesome camera um, I got a great deal uh, he upgraded his setup so I bought this from him and I love it it's it's great I mean the video quality of the last video that I did was great I kind of gonna improve my filming a little bit maybe get a tripod maybe uh, figure out what other accessories I can use to bring you guys better content but Long story short, thank you Josh, love you man, uh, thank you guys, love all you guys for supporting me, uh, you know, shout out to my beautiful girlfriend, my family, my good friend Sal, Fangy, uh, Ray, you know, all these customers, friends that have supported me all this time, um, and yeah, I couldn't have done it without you guys. Um, uh, we'll talk about the shop thing in another video, um, some things are happening, some changes are happening, which I want to talk about in a, another video, but... Um, Still doing everything here, taking bills. Right now, I actually stopped taking bills because I have way too many, so I gotta get all this out and a couple other projects that I had left. I gotta get all that stuff out before I can take any further builds. So right now, I'm just catching up and uh, yeah, basically catching up and finishing people's projects. Uh, which brings me to my next point, the topic of this video. Cylinder head O-ringing for the 4G63. So I'm gonna show you guys the tooling that I use, how I do it, why we do O-ringing, uh, I'm gonna try to make it as short as possible and as detailed as possible. I'm gonna uh, try my best because this uh, camera battery is gonna die, so I might have to charge it. But if I do, then uh, you know, whatever. If it if it becomes a long video, or whatever. I know you guys like it, so yeah. Um, first and foremost, what is O-ringing? Um, O-ringing is when you cut a groove, um, a receiver groove, and then you insert a wire in. Uh, with the wire protruding slightly and what that's going to do is it's going to put pressure on the head gasket um, and it's going to put pressure right outside the fire ring of the head gasket or the folded uh, layer of the head gasket and basically it's going to increase the pressure point over there and what that's going to help is it's going to help uh, combat extreme combustion pressures that you know usually result in head lift um, now you know that can be a good thing and a bad thing obviously the head gasket is there to give you know something happens so another thing does not have to but usually on these 4G63s or in a lot of other applications too but spe specifically the 4G63s in my field of expertise um, they do tend to flex the aluminum heads do tend to flex and uh, you know as soon as you lift that head just slightly uh, you know you just blow through that gasket so when you're getting really aggressive with the tune uh, a lot of boost a lot of timing or either or really uh, bad fuel detonation event you know spark plug doesn't fire properly a lot of things can cause it but basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to seal that combustion pressure in there so it basically helps the tuner uh, be able to be a little bit more aggressive with it and for the head to stay in place you know even if everything's good you know you sometimes these engines are just being pushed and uh, you know sometimes it's just bound to happen uh, you guys have to understand guys with race cars with cars like this eight nine thousand horsepower these are you know three four times the factory output the, the design factory output of this engine so you know it's it's very chaotic so you know we kind of have to do everything that we can to make sure everything is going to last as long as possible and make sure you know we can do whatever we can to uh, combat these situations. One of them is O-ringing the cylinder head. Now, I've uh, ran cars up to, you know, uh, 10 to 1 compression cars 
over 40, 45 pounds um, with no problems without lifting the head. Uh, over 50 pounds on lower compression cars. Uh, however, like I said, this is just another safety cushion for you, so you know you don't have to compromise the head gasket. So basically what we do on these aluminum heads and i'm gonna show you guys my fixture and everything sorry it's a mess over here guys um all right so right here i have a brand new evo 8 head that uh just got back from the machine shop so this is a full fully ported head uh for my clients evo over here so this is on a 6766 uh built long rod 2.0 uh gonna make a lot of power Whoever uh, did the setup before didn't do it properly, so the head was uh, lifted when the car was brought to me. Um, so basically, um, we have the aluminum head. We have this BHJ products uh, fixture. So this is an O-ring fixture. Now, we have this cutter over here that what we do is, um, with an Allen, we will adjust the depth I'm sorry, the width of the O-ring uh, groove. So I forgot the exact number on this, but basically I had to take some calculations and look at the head gasket and see exactly where I'm gonna have to be to land outside of that uh, fire ring reg uh, or that folded uh, layer of the head gasket and you want it to be right outside. Uh, if you place it in the wrong place, this can actually hurt you instead of help you because it can just unseat the head gasket and uh, you know just cause it to leak instead of seal. Uh, so once that's set up, uh, we have these cutters over here, one of which is already set up in there. Let me see if I can get it out for you guys. If I, can, I probably can't, but this is a 039 cutter. So this has three faces. Um, once one face wears out, we'll swap them, you know, we'll flip it over and we'll use the other one and then we'll flip it over again and once the other one wears out, we'll just swap to another one. These are fairly expensive. I think they're like $50 a piece. Um, so this is a 31 thou cutter, like I said. So the 31 thou, uh, we're using an 041 wire. So it's gonna have a 2 thou press fit. Uh, now what that means is the wire is actually gonna be thinner in diameter and the wire is gonna be wider. So that press fit's gonna help hold the wire in place. As you guys can see, I've already cut one, two, and three. And uh, the way you do it is you'll basically adjust this dot turn it counterclockwise slightly until you start making contact you'll go a little bit and then you'll adjust it a little bit more you'll cut like five thousand so each uh, graduation that we have here is one thousand so one two three four five I'm sorry one two three four five so on the fifth one that's five thousandths turn it counterclockwise you cut it take this off I'm not gonna do it I'm just gonna demonstrate you take that off you zero this out, so this is just the dial indicator. Let me just try to find it's the dial indicator. There you go. So you put the dial indicator on the surface of the head, you zero it out, and then there's three, three sluts, um, not sluts, slots. Sorry about that, my English not so good. Um, and basically these are for us to be able to check with the indicator how deep the groove is. So that's a special, um, attachment for the dial indicator that is going to measure it's it's very thin so it's going to measure be able to go on the, inside that 39 thousandths uh, groove and measure how uh, deep our groove is so what I usually aim for is five to six dial protrusion so we're using the 041 wire like I said if you guys see over here 10 20 30 35 thou so we're gonna have 35 minus uh, uh, 41 we're gonna have six thou of protrusion which is perfect and what you want to do is you want to make sure all all three are exactly at the same spot now this one is acting up I just checked it but um, this one is at there you go 36 this one should be 36, 35 ish. Yep. So half a thou isn't gonna really, you know, make or break it. But you guys, you guys get the idea. Um, sorry, I have to zero it out for this one. Uh, the indicators kind of gotten thrown around, so it's not exactly super accurate right now. But you guys get the idea. See, they're all at 36. So that's five thou protrusion. Same thing over here, 36. Um, so once we do that. The next step would be to get our wire, 
and there's two types of wire really two types of wire you can use for this process um, this right here is a spring wire so it's a heat treated uh, stainless steel um, 041 wire like I said and it's spring wire now there's two wires to use uh, you can use a soft stainless steel which usually mars when you try to bang it in I'm not the biggest fan of that uh, some people like it uh, particularly because it actually holds shape this one does not really want to hold shape it's springy uh, however a lot of people use the spring wire and the reason you hold this uh, you use the spring wire is I can literally take a stainless hammer to this and this wire will not mar uh, now when I install it I'll go ahead and I'll use this uh, nylon uh, bar that I have. So I'll hammer the top of whatever hammer and then uh, I'll hit the wire with this. So regardless of if I was using a spring wire or a soft stainless wire, I wouldn't mar it. But I really like this because uh, it, whenever you do bang it in there, especially if you give it a slight press fit, uh, that thing's not coming out. I mean, it, it's just there's so much pressure on it that's not coming out. And once this thing gets bolted on the head, it's not going anywhere. So, again, about five to six dollar protrusion is what I really like to use on the MLS style head gaskets or the factory Mitsubishi 4G6 three head gaskets or, you know, really any five layer MLS is uh, what I've found, you know, five to six dollar is ideal. Uh, if this was a copper head gasket, we would protrude it, you know, over 10, 12 thou and uh, cut a receiver groove on the block or we would typically put the o-rings on the uh, block and we'll cut receiver grooves in the head if it's a copper but uh, we're talking about MLS here so very street oriented stuff that you can you know do these services and basically get uh, be able to get some more performance out of it without you know compromising the head gasket now now again guys this is just uh, something to help it's not really uh, something that uh, is gonna prevent tuning failures or, or to, you know stuff like that. This is just something to add to your build, uh, sort of like a peace of mind. And remember, guys, if this is done wrong, if like let's say there's a five thousands variation from this, you know, this slot to this slot, you're just gonna completely ruin that head gasket seal. Um, so yeah, it's gotta be done properly. Now, another thing that I wanted to mention is, as you guys can see, this head is resurfaced. So this head actually came back from the machine shop. Ideally, you wanna do this before the cylinder head is assembled. Uh, it's okay, I always pressure wash the heads after I do something like this, uh, or after I get it back from the machine shop anyway, uh, just to make sure I get all the bits and pieces out from the porting process and all that stuff. But you have to make sure the cylinder head is surfaced because if it's not, if it's warped even a little bit, it can affect uh, the depth, uh, the grooves, uh, the depth of the groove. Yes, sorry, guys, still trying to wake up. Um, and uh, you know that's bad news, and you just want to make sure the surface is perfectly flat and perfectly straight. So. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this last one and once I cut it I'm gonna take the plate off and I'm gonna show you guys how we actually uh, go on about banging the o-rings in there all right guys so um, took the battery off the charger a little earlier and um, I didn't get to show you once basically um, this uh, fixture from BHJ was taken off but basically uh, what I did and what I always do if I can find it my little cerebur here so this is a ceramic deburring tool and what I do is I'll go around the grooves like this and I'll take off any uh, sharp edge that's left from the cutting process uh, and that's just you know that's just quality control I just want to make sure you know your finger doesn't get stuck on it or anything like that it just makes the job that much nicer it really doesn't serve any purpose because when you install the wire the wire is gonna uh, sit higher than those uh, ridges that are created by the cut anyway but again I just like to do it uh, so anyway we got uh, we got four three and two banged in already so again this is right at five uh, to five and a half thou protrusion um, so as you guys can see I started it over here you guys see how it's like press fit in here and how like it doesn't come out um, so once you press it in what you want to do is you want to you also want to blow out the actual groove that you cut because if you have something in there like let's say a chip of aluminum or something from the cutting process like something like this um, it'll raise it a thou thou and a half two thou and that could be enough to actually um, demolish any 
you know, good results that you get from O-ringing the cylinder head. So once everything's cleaned out and this has been blown out with compressed air and D-bird, um, what I like to do is I kind of just like to, it's kind of hard to do it with one hand because again, spring wire, kind of want to lay it like this and see where it ends and I'll snip it with my pliers uh, about three millimeters, two, three millimeters longer. And what that'll allow me to do is that'll allow me to hold this wire with one hand or a plier, file this until it's perfectly square because this is what you want to have. I don't know if you guys can see right there. And it's going to be a perfect square butted against each other. Um, I will have probably like uh, 0.2 or 0.3 millimeters longer of a wire when I'm done with it. And what I'll do is I, I will put this edge in there and I will use my um, nylon wedge, nylon uh, bar, and I'll bang it in there. And what that'll do is that'll actually create pressure and it'll make it a press fit. Um, um, I don't know the proper word for it, but the wire is press fit when you put it on, in the groove. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to put more press on it uh, by making the wire a little bit longer. Now, if you make it a little too long, what will happen is you'll have uh, edges that are raised. So that's why once I actually bang this wire in, I'll go over it with my finger and I'll basically tilt my head and, uh, you know, make sure that all of these are level, uh, that you don't have a spot that's sticking up really high because uh, that could happen if the wire is too long. It will wedge in there. You know, you can wedge the wire in there, but it doesn't mean it's going to be proper. So... What I'm showing, uh, what I'm going to show you guys next is the finished product of all four in there. And like I said, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to snip this about two, three millimeters longer than it needs to be, and then I'll file it until it's about 0 0.2, 0 0.3 millimeters uh, longer, and I'll bang it in starting from here. So I won't start here because if I do, then it's going to be longer, guys, because I left it long. That's kind of what I'm trying to get at. Um, so once that's done. Uh, that's pretty much it. Now, another thing that you guys will not notice, but I'll point out, is the O-rings all end in the same allocation. And the reason I do that is because there's a head stud uh, hole over here. Uh, so what that'll do is this edge that's uh, the end of the wire uh, will have a lot of clamping force over here. So because the wire ends here, and it's not a big gap, but because there is a small, small gap, I mean, it's like, you know, micro thousands, but because there's a small gap over there, this will actually help uh, crush down on that gap and we won't have any sealing issues. That's another trick. Uh, you always have to line it up with a head stud hole so it holds the pressure. All right, guys, so I'm just gonna do my thing here because unfortunately, I don't know how to time lapse with this camera and I don't have anybody else to film. So I'll show you guys the, per, uh, the finished product and in a couple minutes all right guys well this is the finished product right here just like I said um, on every single wire uh, I leave about 0.2 millimeters maybe uh, just slightly slightly longer so I can have a press when I put this edge in butt it against the other one and uh, bang it in with the nylon bar um, but yeah guys this is what it looks like when you have it all done um, it's a fairly straightforward process if you have the tooling and if you have the patience to do it properly. And it'll help greatly with cylinder uh, sealing under super high you know, cylinder pressures. So yeah, and it looks beautiful. I mean, look at that surface finish. Very proud of how this one came out. They all come out good, but yeah, I, I love seeing them like this. <laughs> Again, guys, two, uh, I'm sorry, five to six out protrusion is really all you need for an MLS head gasket because you're just trying to, you're not trying to crush the gasket, you're just trying to put a little bit of pressure on it. And yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, DM me on Instagram, uh, underscore rbuilt uh, is my Instagram and uh, info at ronniebuilt.net if you guys are trying to get any work done uh, as of right now there is a weight uh, so cylinder heads I might be able to take in but as far as short blocks uh, I cannot so I'm pretty much just doing remote tunes on-site tunes and cylinder head work thank you guys thank you for watching and I hope you guys have an amazing weekend